Hi, Don Garbutt here. Welcome back. In part two of this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the MIDI file and also how Plogue Bidule processes MIDI messages. Let's quickly go over the process of making a MIDI file. First of all, one of your tracks has to have an event at bar 1 beat 1, and that'll set the start point of the MIDI file. Then what you have to do is make sure that the MIDI notes in the sequences are coded with the right channel values. An easy way to do that is to select the first track, this would be channel 1, and go into the event list and double check that all your notes are on channel 1. They'll probably be showing channel 1 because that's most likely the channel that your keyboard controller is transmitting on. Go through each track. This is my channel 6 track. Here's a case where some notes have channel 1 values and some notes have channel 6 values. Some notes in that sequence were channel 1 because I went back and added some new notes after I'd first made a MIDI file out of it. If you want to set all the channels to channel 6, which is appropriate for this particular track, select the note of a non-channel 6 event, go to your edit menu and select equal channels. All notes of that channel value will be highlighted and then you can change them all to channel 6. So as long as you've made sure that all the channel values are correct for the particular instrument, make sure you have all your regions selected, and export selection as MIDI file. Right, now back to Bidule. Now back in Bidule, I thought what I'd do is build this thing from scratch so you can follow the steps. First, we need MIDI input. In our case, we're still working with the program M, so I'm going to control click and get MIDI input from M. This is one of the four Bidule MIDI pathways. Now I'm going to get a MIDI clock to sync input, and I'm going to hook up a cable from the incoming MIDI data to the clock to sync. Now I'm going to load a MIDI file looper, and I'm going to sync that up to the MIDI clock to sync. Then I'm going to add my MIDI file into the media bin and I'm going to select that file from the MIDI file list. Now I'm going to get a MIDI channel splitter. I'm going to hook up the MIDI file looper to the channel splitter, and I'm going to hook the channel splitter up to the individual instruments that I'm going to load that will play the MIDI file. I'm going to add a mixer, a tornado, and an audio output. I'm going to use the driver for Soundflower because that enables me to send the audio from Plug Bidule to this video recording. I recommend that you complete the hookup before going in and setting your patches and sync status. The sync window only shows up when the audio linkup is complete. Now I'm going to go into the instruments and load their particular patches and set the sync. I'll set the sync on Tornado as well. Now we need to hook up the objects which will turn M's notes into controller messages. We're going to be able to use MIDI channels to talk to the individual processors in Tornado. What we need are eight MIDI note number two parameter objects. I'm going to use copy and paste to accomplish this a little quicker. I'm going to name these objects so it's a little easier to keep track of them. Control click. To get the notes from M to these devices, we need a MIDI channel splitter again. I've attached the eight cables to the eight devices. We're going to be sending notes from M, so I could just hook this here, except that I found out that M doesn't like to write a C minus 2, and to push the tornado knob to the zero value, it's looking for a note number that is C minus 2. Oddly enough, M won't let me write that note. M starts at C sharp minus 2. So what I need to do is transpose the MIDI notes that'll be coming from M with a transposer device. These are like transformers in Logic. And in the note transposer, I'm going to transpose everything down by three octaves, minus 36. That's all set. The notes will be transposed, channel split to these devices. Now the only thing left to do is to assign these devices to the knobs in Tornado. I'm just going to shift the screen here because to do this, we have to open up the parameters page. This is a very interesting part of Bidua. The parameters page allows you to set a source and target link relationship. Here you see the MIDI note to parameter objects. The note to parameter object creates a parameter value. That value can be linked to a target by pressing the link button. I'm going to link up all eight of those MIDI note to parameter objects, and we should be able to start to see some action now. Here's the M preference page. It's actually called MIDI assignment, but I call it preferences. In this page, I assign the output for the note messages. I'll just be using channels one to eight for this. And also, I set the output for the MIDI clock sync from M. With those settings, notes and clock should arrive here, turning into sync to drive the looper, the notes turning into multi-channel parameter values. There's one more thing I have to set up, and it has to do with the MIDI clock sync. MIDI clock kind of starts up roughly when it's starting from external sync. I've been able to use the override tempo function to temporarily run on the internal clock of Bidule until it establishes a stable read of the MIDI clock. I'm having to do this so often that what I did was I set up my sustain pedal on my keyboard to activate this switch. To do that, we have to get keyboard information into Bidule, so I need one more MIDI input device. 
the part that actually sees my controller keyboard. Now that I have that device activated, I can go back to the parameters page and find that device and select from the long list of controllers, controller number 64. That device can be linked to the button in the MIDI clock to sync device that overrides the tempo. Now that I've set that up, you see my sustain pedal activates the switch. In the last tutorial, I mentioned a little bit about how M operates. It's too long-winded a story to be able to tell at this point, so I'm going to save that for another tutorial. But you could say that because M is a sequencer, it allows you to load notes in from your MIDI keyboard. I'm going to set the note length in advance here, and it can work a bit like a drum machine in terms of programming, but you can also use it as a step recorder. So what I'm going to do is set a track into record and play some notes. At the same time, you'll see the tornado knobs moving. Now I'm going to press play on M, and you see the knob moving. The system works. When I made the MIDI file, I left two bars blank for the tempo to establish itself. It's good to press play on M, and Bedule can establish the incoming MIDI clock tempo. Bedule will start when you press play on M, but make sure you're holding down the sustain pedal for the first bar and a half or so. That'll allow Bedule's internal clock to run, and that will smooth out the initial start up under the MIDI clock. I went to M and recorded a few more notes in some tracks and set up a few snapshots. Let's hear how it sounds. Sustain pedal, play, release sustain pedal. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.